welcome to worship at DeSoto Presbyterian Church. We're glad you've joined us on YouTube this morning. We will continue to put our worship on YouTube through the end of the coronavirus emergency. Let us worship God. Let us pray. Loving God, we celebrate the coming of the new day that holds for us the joy of your kingdom. You have divided, provided us with many good things, but beyond the material, you have given us the gift of eternal life, a gift of infinite worth. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, we have the opportunity to celebrate with you and all the followers who have gone before us. For all these gifts, we rejoice. Amen.
Our scripture today comes from John 20, 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my fingers in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It always seemed just a little unfair to me that Thomas got stuck for all eternity with the nickname Doubting Thomas. He wanted proof that this man he was talking to was in fact Jesus. He wanted to see the wounds that were inflicted at crucifixion. I would guess that he thought they couldn't be faked and he needed proof. It doesn't seem like an unreasonable request to me. After all, no one had ever come to life after they were dead, except possibly Lazarus. So his concern about authenticity of the risen Christ can really be understood by most of us. After all, we live in a world that says trust, but verify. When dealing with people, that approach makes very good sense. When dealing with things more celestial, the verify part becomes very hard. We cannot ask to see Christ's wounds. We must have faith that the scriptures tell us the true story of the Son of the living God. Faith is the belief in things unseen, and that is what we are called to do. Jesus tells the disciples that they believed because they had seen his wounds. And despite 2,000 plus years of criticism heaped on Thomas, the other disciples were shown Christ's wounds also when Christ first appeared to them. Jesus tells the disciples that those who would follow would have a much harder job, the job to believe without seeing the wounds, without verifying his death and resurrection. And that is us. Our faith in the unseen God and trust in the promise of eternal life through his Son keeps us grounded. That faith keeps us ever hopeful, ever joyful, and ever certain of eternity in the presence of the living God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we praise your name with heart and voice and boldly declare before the nations that you are God. In one accord, we cry out for those in distress this day, those who are sick, those who are grieving, those who are weary from working, from the work of helping others, those who serve and those who need that service. Be with each person in their hour of need. Grant them strength to fight on and grant them hope for a future where joy surrounds each person. We pray for those who make difficult decisions here at home and around the world. May they bend their will to your control and make decisions from a place of rational compassion for all of God's creation. Thank you for those who selflessly work to keep us safe and healthy, even at the risk of their own lives. Give them your peace and let them rest securely in your love. Now we join with the saints in every time and every place and pray as you taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Amen.